Okay, today is August the 1st, 2017, and right now at 8 p.m., we have a temperature of 85 degrees in the foothills of Los Angeles. The uh, relative humidity is 57%, and the dew point is 68 degrees, and it's very, very humid because of that number. And uh, we have a barometer reading of 29.89 inches. And today there was sporadic rain around the uh, region, around the Southern California area. Uh, let's take a look at the Doppler map right now. We can see what's going on in L.A. We've got some rain over the grapevine, the Interstate 5. If we zoom in here, we can see the, uh, the 5 right here, which goes up all the way up into uh, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, we have some uh, yellow and orange cells right up here, so it's raining pretty steadily up there. Uh, there was some rain over the foothills uh, uh, today and also out over uh, uh, Big Bear, uh, Wrightwood, and out... Uh, into the desert right now we can see that uh out near las vegas uh there is uh, a lot of rain we have a bullhead city uh right here we've got lake havasu and uh here's las vegas way up here there's not much rain up there right now but just south of vegas uh there's a lot of heavy rain along the interstate 40. all right uh and also looking around the country uh, we can see that uh, there is rain in Texas. We've got rain down near uh, Florida. There's a giant supercell down here uh, near the Yucatan uh, Peninsula being uh, targeted. We'll take a look at that. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the water vapor map. This is the remnants of Irwin, which is trying to reform. We can see some counterclockwise rotation right here. And look what's happening. We have a a right angle firming up right in this area and uh, let's take a better look at this right now in the uh, floaters uh, infrared loop and we can see that uh, what's happening here we have a line let's go ahead and stop the loop and we can see this forming right here we have a, a straight edge that forms uh, throughout this towards the end of the seven and one half hour loop And we see this line of moisture as it's pushed out where this transmitter is creating a right angle. This is a microwave transmitter. And what's happening is that they are trying to separate this area of moisture from the uh, center, the low pressure center, which is right here. And we can see that happening. So they've got a transmitter right here. This is uh, creating a right angle. And we see a lot of dissipation, evaporation in this. Uh, this associated front, if you want to call it that. This is one of the bands of this former Hurricane Irwin. Let's go ahead and just run the loop. You can see what's happening here. You see they run they run a transmitter right here and it's it's expanding out. You can see the expansion where they apply the power and they vary the aperture of that power. And then right after this area here is done, then they put the rectangle they put the transmitter right in here and we can see a new rectangle beginning to reform right in this area so by the end of this loop if we just uh, step through it once again we can see that a, a second attempt is being made here they have put power right here and we've got a, a rectangular feature right there and that will then separate this portion away from this low pressure center so they're isolating this low pressure center and that's the purpose of these right angles and rectangles that we see in these weather systems, whether it be a hurricane or a, a North Pacific storm or a gale, doesn't matter. They they use this this uh, technique uh, to separate the uh, associated uh, frontal system, or in this case, the uh, the moisture wrapping around uh, Irwin. So that's clear to see what they're doing. Just in in one hour's time, we have two two frames that. Or three frames that really show what's happening right here. This develops into a rectangle very quickly in about, uh, you know, an hour and a half lapsed time. So Irwin is being uh, beat up. Let's go to the big map again. And uh, this is where we were just looking right here. And all of this is sort of gradually moving to the north. Now, uh, today we had a very odd event in Southern California in the foothills around 7 30 a.m. There was a, a transmitter downburst, a supercell, rather a developing 
uh, cell similar to something like this was starting to develop right uh, in Arizona and moving into California. And that was hit. And uh, the transmitter knocked a big hole in it. And that caused a lot of wind this morning, which lasted about 15 minutes, around 7.30 a.m. There was a small amount of rain, and then we had this transmitter downburst, which it blew apart this developing uh, <clears throat> uh, area of weather. Now, this is, again, at 7.30 a.m. This is a real time right now. We're watching a different map right now. But uh, the, the uh, transmitter downburst, that heated descending air was very, very warm. And uh, I talked to someone today that uh, had, his, had his windows open and uh, noticed out the window what was happening. There was a lot of wind. and the uh, very, very warm air for 7.30 in the morning came uh, blasting into the house and slammed a few doors as that uh, pressure wave made its way through uh, one of the foothill communities. So uh, we can see here that earlier today, this is an, this is an area of low pressure, which is uh, spinning, trying to spin counterclockwise. And following that is this uh, monsoonal moisture and so the, these uh, terrorists controlling our weather, running these transmitters, are systematically targeting these storms. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other maps real quick. Uh, we have the uh, infrared map. We can see the depth of the water vapor here moving in uh, through Southern California. Here's Irwin down here. We can see that uh, right angle firming up, that uh, rectangle right here, and then in, uh, right in the uh, right in the very center of that. So they are separating the moisture away from the very center of that system. That's how they do that. And actually tonight, uh, when we move to the next map here, we'll, we're going to see what's happening. We have another cell that's being targeted right there. And look at the blast pattern shooting out to the west. Right here. Right there, shooting out. And we see this uh, developing cell just implode right there. Let's watch it again. It's very clear to see. So this area right here was targeted with microwave, and that's why we had very sparse amounts of rain. Uh, nothing was uh, measurable on my uh, rain gauge, my uh, weather station. It rained for approximately five minutes, and then it stopped. And so these uh, terrorists controlling our weather have complete control. They can uh, allow it to rain. They can shut off the spigot at any time. Let's take a look at the next map here. We have the visible light map. And uh, once again, we can see that uh, we can see this uh, pressure wave, shock wave, right there, towards the end, right there. Let's uh, slow it down and uh, skip through it. Right here, we have the beginning of the pressure wave right there. You can see that moving out. And of course, this is the area that was targeted. And this just uh, disintegrates, it implodes, and there's really nothing left. If we go back to the infrared map, we can see the color change here after that area was targeted. We have a, a sort of a red cell developing, and it's uh, just uh, destroyed. And notice that's not happening over here in this area. These are uh, building up. And we don't see uh, we don't see the same characteristics over here as we do in this area. That's a very obvious pressure wave right there, a shock wave, as a result of that superheating process. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at the next map. This is the uh, East Pacific Water Vapor Loop. We can see that we have a new disturbance right here which is being allowed to form, uh, let's take a look at the uh, National Hurricane Center map right here. This disturbance now has a 30% chance of hurricane formation in two days. Uh, yesterday it was down at 20%, and the day before it was 10%. Up here we have a post-tropical cyclone Irwin with uh, 35 mile per hour winds and moving north, northwest at 8 miles per hour. Okay, this is bringing uh, some elevated surf to the 
Southern California beaches, rip currents. And uh, so the point here uh, with this guy down here, this uh, new disturbance, is that these weather controllers can knock this down, this area right here, at any time. We've seen what happened to Irwin, what happened to Hillary, and all the rest of these uh, hurricanes. They are allowed to spool up down here in the eastern East Pacific, and they move out. They could be killed any time they want to knock this down, they could. And, of course, during the winter months, that's exactly what they do. If you keep an eye on the eastern East Pacific, uh, uh, these storms are uh, <clears throat> building up all the time. This, this goes on year-round. Okay, now it just so happens that during the hurricane season, they let a few of these uh, spool up, these storms, and they let them move out into the uh, eastern Pacific Ocean, and they put on a show. Sometimes they'll run them towards the land and scare everybody, and then they knock them down at the last second, like we saw with Hurricane Patricia back in, I think it was October of 2015. I'm going to get that uh, those uh, bookmarked on my uh, playlist, so uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, next. Uh, we have the East Coast. We can see a, a big supercell down here by the Yucatan uh, Peninsula right right there. This is refreshing. There we go. Anyhow, this is building up, and we can see a blast pattern starting to form on this area. And that is, uh, that is a microwave transmitter. We can see the blast pattern starting to form as that area is superheated with microwave. And we're seeing the color change as well. That's a, a way over here on the far side. We've got the magenta and the deep uh, blue, uh, navy blue. This is all mostly the, the pink magenta color. All right. Uh, so now that, let's take a look at the pressure maps. This is the sea level pressure map for the uh, west coast. We see an area of low pressure. Situated over Nevada and California right here. And we have the remnants of uh, Irwin right out here. Got a low pressure right down here in Mexico. Now let's take a look at the 500 millibar map, which shows high pressure stacked right on top of that low pressure. So we've got low pressure, which is rising air in the, in the sea level pressure map right here. And then stacked on top of that is this high pressure, which is uh, stopping the lift. All right, and here's that low from uh, former Hurricane uh, Irwin. Here's the 300 millibar. We see a low out here near this uh, former hurricane. We've got a high pressure, upper level high right here over the uh, Mexican uh, border along with Arizona and New Mexico. All right, so that's the report. Uh, <clears throat> there is a forecast for more rain, thunderstorms tomorrow. We heard the we saw the lightning and the thunder in the distance, and uh, these people, these terrorists running our uh, weather, controlling our weather, need to allow this rain to uh, develop and allow it to uh, drop, you know, an inch or two of rain. We need that rain here in Southern California. We need the rain. Okay, so let her rain. This is this is the problem right here. They're superheating these storms, and that's why we're not uh, getting the rain. Now, I don't have the MODIS Today map up right now, but there was chemtrails sprayed over the southwest. We'll bring that map up next time. Okay, that's it.